The following footage was recorded in January 2020 before COVID changed the way we traveled. year I went on a missions trip with some friends of mine, fellow expats who I met in Shanghai back in 2019. Knowing that we had a full itinerary ahead of us, my friends wanted me to experience Cape Coast Castle before I did anything else. And as you watch the video, you'll see why. Cape Coast is the capital of the central region in southern Ghana. This place, this large whitewashed fortress built in the 17th century, is most famously known for its role in the transatlantic slave trade. Overlooking the Gulf of Guinea, Cape Coast Castle was later used by the British as a holding prison for slaves where our ancestors were subjected to cruelty and locked away in the bowels of this fortress. Built in 1605 and for close to 100 years, these British took Africans away to their colonies in the Americas, the Caribbean, where they enslaved the Africans. And they the Africans they took away, many of them were Ghanaians, but there were some taken from neighboring countries, Togo, Benin, Burkina Faso, and Port And these were people kidnapped randomly but from their Nigerian. homes. Also Nigeria, you know, from yeah, different you know countries. Uh, there were many others who were prisoners of interstate wars. Wherever these Africans were captured, they walk. Yeah, brought to the slave castles by middlemen, slave raiders and also by the British directly. Oh. The middlemen and slave raiders, they brought the Africans here to auction them. <laughs> they exchange them for European commodities, guns, gunpowder, textiles. And after they get the Africans, they, they branded them with the branded irons, you know, the branding on the arms or the backs for easy identification. And from there, they separate them. The men were put in the male dungeon, the women in the female dungeon. In these dungeons, the Africans were kept for two weeks to three months, waiting for the slave ships to arrive from Britain. And then when the ships come, they send the Africans to the Americas and the Caribbean, and then enslaved them. You know, they stripped them of their freedom, their names, religion, language, and then enslaved the Africans on the sugarcane, the tobacco, the cotton plantations. Right. So, Let's walk to the door of Norfolk. Cape Coast Castle was once the largest slave trading center in West Africa. The majority of the slave workforce came from places even as far away as Niger and Burkina Faso. Basically, all the rooms on the upper floors used to be the apartments and offices for these British, you know. They lived up there. These were the storehouses. The goods they brought, the textiles, tobacco, and all that, they stole them here. And they did not take all the Africans, they stole the natural resources, the gold, you know, the timber, the diamonds, and all that. They put them here for the ships to come for them. So all these so houses in those days. The women, the, the, the female Africans kept in the dining they were being raped. And the women who resisted rape, they locked them in a female punishment cell. 
and then starve them. You know, you could be in the cell for about a week whilst in you eat once a day from the palms. So the idea to starve you, to try and break you with the intention that the next time you'll be submissive, you'll be giving, and also use you, put fear in the other woman to be submissive. And this was the female punishment. These were the female diamonds, two, each holding 200 women. And the, the conditions in the diamonds were horrible. They, they defecated in there, they were urinating the diamonds, they, they had their menstruation there, and they stayed in the waste. Morning and evening, the food put in the palms. And for two weeks to three months, these British kept the Africans in the diamonds. Many of them often became sick, many died. When one dies, the body carried out and thrown into the ocean. And this is the door of the original. Here's it. Originally small and narrow, the Africans had to go down to walk out, but changed later into the big one. The name is very symbolic. No one came here willingly. These were Africans kidnapped, taken from their host families and forced here. When they were taken out into the slave ship, they lost contact with everything. They were sent to an unknown world. The Americas, the, the Caribbean, enslaved on the farms, and the Africans never returned home. Small boats, like what you see on the ocean. The slave ships stayed a bit far. The boats moved them to the ships before they are moved away to an unknown world. But now the local people fish here. So we see a lot of fish. Bones are the remains of two descendants of enslaved Africans were resumed from their graves and flown to die. The bones of an African American by name Samuel Carson and a Jamaican woman. The name Madam Crystal. When the bones were flown to Ghana, they were brought to this slave castle on the boat and taken into the castle through the same boat. A traditional funeral was then held over the bones at the courtyard and they were later reburied in a town in Ghana known as Asan Manso. Asan Manso was a, a major slave route and slave market. After the remains were reburied, and this was put away. Door returned, very symbolic. Millions of Africans were taken out of this door, and many other points on the west coast of Africa. And these were Africans forced out of their mother. They never returned. But the remains that were returned symbolically broke that back. So this same door, it is now a gateway back home. The motherland. So to our brothers and sisters in the diaspora, all we are seeing is power. Welcome home. As I walked around the area, through the walkways where our ancestors were raped, beaten, imprisoned, starved, tortured, debased, and then the ones who were still alive, they were the ones traded into slavery. Man, my heart began to break. It was as if I could feel all the pain, the rage, and also the power of the slaves that were held within. Nothing like a little bit of history to get the mind flowing. So, as the tour guy said, those up there were offices and rooms where the colonizers would stay, and the bottom rooms were where they kept the slaves. Hello. 
This is gorgeous. You did these? Yes, sir. Some of them? Which ones did you do? Before we left, we went to visit a few of the craft shops that were still open as the museum was closing for the evening. This is gorgeous. Hand painted portraits? Are you saying you can do me? We can take it off and roll it up also. Really? You did this? Every piece of art in this shop was incredible. But more importantly, the quotes on the paintings were just wow. super hot fire. Wow. Forever stained with the pain of the past, Cape Coast is one of Africa's most culturally significant spots. And you know, for me, it was surreal to stand on the pier and stare out at the shoreline where the bodies of lifeless slaves were tossed into the ocean. And the rest, well, they were herded onto ships like livestock and animals, undeniably changing the lives of generations, much like mine, to come. <laughs> 